What's going on, everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to the channel, and we are here for a new episode of the Philadelphia Eagles Madden 21 Flashback Rebuild as we gear up for yet another new season. We finished the tail end of the 20... Uh, what year was this? 2017 draft? 2016 draft? Like, we see some of the first round picks. So I think that's the 2017 draft where we did not get someone fun like a Miles Garrett, like, you know, anyone super, super elite. But in this 2017 draft, we still did a decent haul. You know, we got uh, Ryan Ramchick, left tackle, 12 overall to replace Jason Peters, who just recently retired. We had Sean Andrews, another very talented starting guard with a star dev in the 90s. Could not afford to resign him, so we locked into getting Taylor Moten. Both of these players both have hidden dev traits, so I'm very excited to see where their futures hold. I finished with the draft with some solid players. Hendrickson obviously broke out this year in real life for the Saints, but generally he's, he was like a solid rotational piece. And then I got two Eagles, or these former Eagles, Rudy Ford at safety and Corey Clement at running back. So let's get in to the 2017 season and hopefully get back to the Super Bowl. So as we start the 2017 season, here's where our squad is at an 88 overall, 87 offense, 91 defense. So this might actually be the first year that our defense is higher rated than our offense. In terms of our offense changes, not much. Mariota's developing very nicely. 85 superstar, Shady still a 99 with David Johnson as backup. Macklin and Djax are our premier playmakers. Deshaun has regressed one down to a 98. Robbie Anderson is our third wide receiver. Ramchek and Moten get to start as rookies along with Batonio, Jason Kelsey, and Nate Solder. Hunter Henry at tight end, 82 overall as he entered his second season. Very high ceiling for him. Chance to definitely be one of the best tight ends in a year or two's time in the league. Defensively, the front four, we got Dunlap, Geno Atkins, a little Cincinnati Bengals special, Javon Hargrave, and Trent Cole. Ten Cole, who has actually been regressing, which is a little bit sad to see. We got Demario Davis, Chris Borland, and Navarro Bowman at linebacker. Probably top five linebacking core in the NFL. Harrison Smith up to a 95 overall to pair with Jordan Boyer, who he just last offseason converted into a safety from corner. Pat Pete, we made the blockbuster trade last season, sending uh, Antonio Brown to the Houston Texans to acquire Patrick Peterson. Micah Hyde will be our slot corner. And we have DJ Hayden, who we signed in free agency. Special teams, we got Lambo, and we got old Johnny Hecker, 83, superstar best punter in the freaking league. So ultimately, special teams is legit. Defense is legit. Offense is very good. I firmly expect this season. The Philadelphia Eagles, double-digit wins, and a deep, potentially miracle playoff run for another Super Bowl. Not going to get much better than this. Out of the bye, we are still undefeated. 8-0. Very competitive NFCs outside of football team as the Cowboys and Giants both are 6-2. and two. Uh, As we sit here, 8-0. I'm very happy with that. Just a quick sneak peek at the stats. Who's looking good? Mariota's not what? Somehow, we're winning with like a bottom offense and a not great defense. But I'll take it. Certainly will. Uh, contracts. What do we got? We got Jerry Macklin, who's the best wide receiver in the NFL. Oh, my God. We're not going to be able to keep him to Sean, I don't think. Okay, let's prioritize some of the cheaper guys. I'm willing to resign pretty much you know, just about anyone. Borland in the middle linebacker core. Very very cheap, under like around $2.5 million cap it. Still gambling on that dev trait. We have Batonio at guard. I uh, feel, always feel like we can do a little bit better because he hasn't gone up a dev trait. You can't go up a dev trait, but... Um, Let's just let's just stop beating around the bush. Let's get Deshaun Jackson here. Got him locked up. Geno Atkins. He's been solid two-year deal, sure. 14 and a half is pretty expensive. Trent Cole just pretty much re-upping on a one-year. Pay him a little bit more. Yeah, we should be able to just, you know, up that bid a little bit more for Trent Cole and still go into the offseason with probably around, you know, 15-ish million bucks from free agency so we can sign a big-time player or two if need be. I feel, like, I, I feel like I'd be upset if my winning streak stopped after the bye against Dallas. So I really want to hop in and play this one. Six and two Dallas Cowboys. Get a refresher of what their squad looks like. They have Marcel Darius and Phillip Rivers as their superstar X-Factors. Doug Baldwin, Melvin Ingram, Khalil Mack, Ronnie Stanley, Marcus Peters, and Daniil Hunter. So that is a terrifying defense with Khalil Mack, Daniil Hunter, and Melvin Ingram all as edge rushers. I don't know what... 
I guess, okay, they have Ingram and outside linebacker. You have Stanley. You got Marcus Peters in the back end of that secondary. That D-line is terrifying. Big, big test for our offensive line. Rand Ramchek, Taylor Moten, two rookies are getting thrown to the absolute wolves here today. But I definitely feel confident that the Philadelphia Eagles, 89 overall, can knock off the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, let's go, Marcus Mariota. I don't know what happened there. I guess I just stepped out of bounds 35 yards on the keeper. And that's without a skate artist. Even more impressive. Oh! There's no tackling. There's just no tackling. 35-yard rush and 35-yard pass for Marcus Mariota. Good gainer there, Robbie Anderson. Especially breaking that first tackle at the line of scrimmage. Too easy. I'm on, I'm on all pro. I'm not, not hiding anything on you. That was... I hope it's like this for every drive. So that we can be... Anytime you can beat Dallas 95-0, I'm going to take that. Here we go. Jerry Macklin wins off the line of scrimmage. Feels like I'm playing on rookie. Feels like I'm playing on rookie. Confirm before I opt in this game, all pro. All right. Well, hey, there's a little bit of like a reminder that at any given point, the the the, the switch could flip. Things could not go as well for your team. Starting to show a little bit of resistance here. The Dallas Cowboys defense. We're getting third and six on the 37. Oh, it's a little late. Ah, it's too late. Ron Brooks. Former Eagle Ron Brooks. At LSU gets his third pick of the year. Yeah, we'll just take that, though. We'll just take that, though. You, you put press main coverage with not direct safety help, and Deshaun Jackson's going to win that. Legitimately, like 80% of the time. Get the block, Deshaun! Oh man, we got no timeouts. Come on, quick play! Have it. God damn it! If Deshaun Jackson got a fucking block, that would have been a touchdown. Third and goal. Maybe keep this? Be keeper. Oh, Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson make it up for the blown block. Because I mean, Deshaun Jackson is 150 pounds soaking wet. Probably aren't going to be able to rely on him to get blocks downfield. And uh, all's forgotten with that tutty. Ah, oh, no, you're too slow. Kenny Vic to have Kenny go Kenny Vaccaro on Deshaun Jackson. Yeah, you know, we're gonna. We're going to bully him on that one. 77 yards, Deke Jacks. Fourth receiving touchdown of the year. All right, fourth and one. I will give credit. Dallas's run defense has been pretty good. We're under 50 yards, I think, for LaShawn McCoy. We're going to give it to Roosevelt Knicks to put this one away. He runs over the linebacker at the second level. And Philly's going to win this one. Remain undefeated, 35-14. to 14. First round by, we didn't finish the year undefeated. We finished 14 and two. First loss came against Dallas. We were, I think we were 12 and 0 up to 12 and 0. I, I would have loved to see an undefeated season, but 14 and two is is just almost as good. Let's just quickly actually sim to figure out who we're taking on in the divisional round, and we'll look at the stats and dev traits. Oh boy, oh boy. Please don't let this. Oh come on, the sim's gonna have us lose that, aren't they? Aren't they? Uh, let's say, hey, let's think positively. We beat Dallas. We could beat him again. So here's our squad. In terms of dev traits, uh, we had two hidden devs on the O-line. Moten and Ramchek both coming out as star dev. Pretty much thought that was a foregone conclusion for Moten. I thought Ramchek had a chance at superstar. He's been very good in real life with the New Orleans Saints. But okay, whatever, man. We've had some generous uh, dev traits. I don't think many people thought Mariota would have a superstar. So I guess we got that going for us. I don't think we had anything on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, in terms of like a hidden dev trade, no. It was just the two linemen. 
No dev trait scenarios. There actually was only actually one dev trait scenario in season. That was for Mario to go up to an X Factor. But I didn't want to cheese it and force that game. So it just kind of remained as is. And unfortunately didn't hit it, even though it was a victory. Uh, statistically speaking, Marcus Mariota was solid. 3,800 yards, 32 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, almost a 70% completion percentage. You're always going to be winning a lot of games like that. 12-8 and eight for Shady. 5-12 and 12 David Johnson. Really good one-two punch at running back. Uh, the wide receivers, nothing too crazy. Robbie Anderson, because he was in the slot, led our team in yards, almost 906. 8-9 and nine for Macklin, 8-7 and seven for Deshaun Jackson, 6-5 and five for Hunter Henry. And on the defensive side of the ball, 97 tackles for Pat Pete. No picks, which is not ideal. 14 and a half sacks for Dunlap, 9 and a half to Mario Davis, 7 for Geno Atkins, only 2 and a half for Trent Cole, and we spent a lot of money to bring him back on a one-year deal. Maybe that's just too much respect for me for how much I like the Hunter Trent Cole. Five picks for Micah Hyde, love seeing that. Five picks for our only free agent signing, DJ Hayden, love seeing that. Uh, Anthony Walker Jr. got two picks somehow as our depth linebacker. As a rookie, what? There's no injuries. I don't know. He was he dead. He definitely wasn't playing in any of our subs. I don't know, but I'll take that. That's a cool stat line. Uh, yearly awards MVP went to Andrew Luck and the Jacksonville Jaguars. What? Sean's there in uh, Pittsburgh. We got offensive rookie. He went to Jameis Winston. So I'm I'm happy to see Jameis Winston balling just like Marcus Mariota is. As uh, Mariota didn't even make the tops. That's that's a little bit disrespectful. I think. No Eagles on anything? Anthony Walker Jr., a backup linebacker at eight. And then for the individual awards, that is just disrespectful. Carlos Dunlap getting D lineman of the year. Fine. But I think the rest of that is just straight up disrespectful for our Philadelphia Eagles as we get ready to host the Dallas Cowboys on the beginning of our playoff journey. All right, it's a snow game, so absolutely do not want under any circumstance to have to come in and play this game. We get a field goal to start this one off. Back-to-back -back field goals and the first touchdown of the game. A very dominant first quarter for the Philadelphia Eagles. Nothing by way of the Dallas Cowboys. These guys are from the, you know, inside. They're not used to the snow. This is the elements in Philly. Which is kind of weird when you think about it. I feel like if you know, like, if you're Dallas and your rivals are all outside, why would you want to play, like, inside? I mean, can't they? They might be able to open Jerry World, right? But I don't know. It seems like very uh, disadvantageous considering Washington and New York and Philly always are going to play in shitty weather in November and beyond. But I guess, you know, let Jerry do what he's going to do because we are on the thump of it. 44 13. Philadelphia rocks him. 320, three touchdowns for Marcus Mariota. Outstanding job from the defense. Look at that. Under 50% completion percentage for Old Man Phillip Rivers. As Philly's moving on to the NFC Championship game. This is a playoff team that has some history in Philadelphia. Depending on how long of an Eagle fan you are, the Bucs. Uh, probably one of the most upsetting Eagle losses of all time was when we lost to the Bucs. Uh, Cam Jordan is their X Factor. They got Justin Blackman and Josh. This is like the freaking... You want a team that's all about second chances. And, and, and the spirit of a flashback revival. Justin Blackman bust. Josh Freeman bust. Laquan Treadwell bust, and they all seem to be having nice careers here with the Bucks. Davin Joseph, Akeem Tlaib, Richard Sherman, Donald Penn, whoever the hell Tim Crowder is. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's a nice-looking team. This could be difficult. Clear night in Philadelphia, no snow, which is good. Hopefully that helps us out. Uh, then again, maybe a snow game against Tampa Bay could have worked well in our favor. But in the first quarter, Philadelphia gets the first score. The game goes up 7-zip. Again, our defense has been very stout. Not a lot of instant touchdowns going the way against the Eagles defense so far, which makes me pretty happy. The Bucs do get the go-ahead touchdown into halftime. A lot, of, a lot of stuff just happened there, but Philly somehow found a way to get a touchdown to tie this up at 14. Kick the field goal, go up three into the fourth quarter. Tampa equalizes with three minutes to go. It's all level. Super Bowl on the line. Philly gets a field goal. We were settling for field goals, not getting touchdowns. And Tampa gets a touchdown. A minute 42 to go. For Philadelphia to find a way to dig deep. Oh, baby, come on, defense. Uh, we got to play this. I don't play a lot of defense. I'm terrible at defense, but I feel like third and seven, 17 seconds to go. Clock running. They burn a timeout, 10 seconds. They're probably going to kick the field goal right. Or are they going to go for it? They're going for it. What does it say? They're going for it. Why? I mean, I guess they still have a timeout. Let's go Trent Cole, the hunter. Get him going. 
Oh, C4, just don't mess this up, buddy. Just don't mess this up. Oh, it's going backwards. Three yards. Hopefully, they, they trust their kicker. If not, that three yards could make a difference. Field goal block. Super Bowl on the line. Who's going to come off the edge? Don't foul. Don't rough the kicker. Ah, it's good. It's looking like it's going to be an OT Super Bowl on the line. I don't really know who has the momentum at this point. Probably Tampa for getting down in the field. Oh, give me one bomb. Give me one bomb. When you have Deshaun Jackson, uh, see, look, they're smart. They're off coverage. This is going to be difficult, but it may, you know, hey, whatever. We might have a chance. Yep. All right, we're going to overtime. Mariota, not a great game so far. Under 200 yards passing. One touchdown, two interceptions. So hopefully he has a better showing here in the overtime period. Tampa won the ball. I assume they're going to receive. So our defense is going to have to stand pat here. Get the ball back in our offense's hands. Give Mariota a chance to redeem himself. Come on, it's Josh Freeman. I'm sure you'll be able to find a way to stop him. Okay, we got to stop. Oh, come on, baby. Field goal. Yes. Get the stop. Kick the field goal. Wasn't pretty by Marcus Mariota, but we found a way to win. That's what happens to good teams, man. You find a way to win. You think with Chip Kelly, you go on a Super Bowl run, you're going to be scoring 50, 60 points every single game. But sometimes your defense and just winning a little bit with a little bit of grit is all it takes as Philly dumps off the Bucks 30 to 27 and is going to a Super Bowl. Looking for Super Bowl number Three. And it's the uh, Miami Dolphins, 11 and 5 Dolphins that we're finding ourselves against in the Super Bowl. They got Eric Berry, Vontae Davis, Eric Ebron, and David Harris as their superstar X Factor. Sam Bradford at quarterback. Bobby Wagner. They got Sean Andrews, old veteran here. Looking for a little bit of revenge. Todd Gurley, Jake Long, Brandon Shrift, Brandon Tate, Lamar Houston, and DeForest Buckner. They actually might have more guys than we do. Or. It's close. This might be like an evenly matched game. They have a higher overall than us. What? All right, this is a big time Super Bowl. 91 overall Miami Dolphins, 90 overall Philadelphia Eagles. It's, it always feels good when it's like clearly like the two best teams in the league. And in the first quarter, both teams going back and forth, but Philly got the only touchdown and looking to extend that here. We kick the field goal up seven. It's looking good, man. We're chewing up a lot of clock, a lot of first downs there. Not a lot of time for Miami to get a quick score like they unfortunately just did at the end of the first half. Still a seven-point lead here for the Philadelphia Eagles. Defense is on full display. Miami gets a touchdown. We get the instant tutty to go up 24-17. Oh, another instant touchdown to open up the drive. 31-24. This is going to come down to the wire. 99 yards. Buck 41, 99 yards. The Miami Dolphins have to go to tie this one up. Do not let this happen. Do not let this happen. And it's over. Yes, sir. Chip Kelly and Marcus Mariota have got their first Super Bowl together in Philadelphia. The third Super Bowl of the flashback. I thank God. Thank God I deserve this. Because any other time I've done any videos, I feel like over the last two years with the Eagles, it's been inherently not fun. Like there's just been something that like, hey, you can't win with Philly. So luckily we're able to kind of re- Rehash through history. Oh, Sam Bradford, sadly. He's covered in mud. He's real disappointed. Real, we're all professional, though. Going up, dapping up Hunter Henry. But that's a nice victory. Third Super Bowl win for Philly. Look at that huge game there for LaShawn McCoy. Long of a 75-yard run. 128 yards, two touchdowns. I think that's his first MVP. He's featured in all three of our Super Bowl victories. But I think it's been Michael Vick. Oh, he might have got one. I remember Deshaun Jackson got one. I think the first one was Michael Vick. But I will take that. Let's get them hoisting that Super Bowl. Shady, Chris Borland, Marcus Mariota, Chip Kelly, and Jeremy Macklin up there on the podium as Philadelphia finds a way. Finds a way with underperformance numbers from the sim for Marcus Mariota. They found a way to get that Super Bowl title. Very nice. Let's bucket go. Or free agency as your defending Super Bowl champion. I come in willing to spend that 13 million bucks if there is an upgrade. And so far, outside of like a veteran in Patrick Willis, there has been not one upgrade to be had. Literally not one. So yeah, let's just let's let's get ready for the draft.
love Madden, man. Got a fifth-year option on Marcus Mariota and the assistant GM. Just can't find a way to get him on the field, man. There's no way to get our starting quarterback on the field. It's 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 annoying, but I do think I'm going to go against my GM's word, and we're going to pick up his fifth-year option, just because I think we might be able to find a way to get him on the field more. So it's draft time, and that's a good time to just finish it up with, like, where should we go? And you guys can give me some help in the comments. So looking at our offense, where do we want to get better? Well, not really anywhere on the offense, to be honest. I mean, you could argue third wide receiver. Maybe there's something that can upgrade over Robbie Anderson. Uh, yeah, rest everyone else is young for the most part. Defensively, could use an upgrade to Javon Hargrave, a defensive tackle. Could use the, the successor to Trent Cole. Always could get an upgrade at middle linebacker over Borland. Corner as well, a sexy corner with a nice dev trade that could potentially be a superstar. So D-tackle, corner, middle linebacker, and wide receiver, I think should be our top needs. As we look at the board of players that are available. You got Josh Allen, don't need him. Lots of running backs, don't really need them. I mean, Shady's get out there in Asia. We still have David Johnson back there. They're playing well in the sim. I don't feel there's a need to draft a wide receiver there. I mean, or a running back there. Wide receivers, there's some talent. Not a lot of guys that are like, oh, yes, that's an immediate first round. I guess Corlin Sutton could be interesting. He's a scheme fit. Early second round talent. I'll put him on the board. Dante Pettis, a bust, but a guy that could be, you know, a redemption project for us. Would be an interesting fit in a Chip Kelly system. Um, Billy Goddard's there available. We just don't need a tight end, right? On the offensive line, again, not seeing much there. Flipping to the defense, could use a D tackle. Not much there. Defensive tackle as well, at least for our first round pick. Darius Slater, the maniac. We could draft him and put him in the middle linebacker. Reunite with my son-in-law. Um, you know, some options at corner. Dante Jackson, scheme fit, second rounder. Josh Jackson's there. Another guy that potentially fits that mold as a, as a I'm not going to say a bust yet, but still waiting to see if you're a Packer fan, what he can actually bring. And into the secondary, not a whole lot. It's not a great draft, me. That's what happens when you win the Super Bowl. You pick at the end. Kind of pick it through the scraps. Corlin Sutton, Dante Pettis, Darius Leonard. Kind of feel like, I mean, there are some corner options there as well. But I'll leave it up to you guys to decide who we should draft in this draft, the 2018 draft. at pick 32. Let me know in the comment section below, and I'll give you guys some clout in the next video with whatever response I decide to use that was bestly worded. Bestly worded. That's English, right? But that'll do it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Until next time, it's C4 saying peace out.